their video. This is part two of working through the Ascension machine over on HackSmarter. This is an easy rated Linux challenge lab with a big focus on lateral movement and various forms of privilege escalation. Now, if this is the first video that you're watching, you're probably going to feel a little bit lost because this is part two. I recommend you go back to part one and follow this series in order. You may also notice that there is chat right over there. They just disappeared when I talked about them. They got scared. But I make all of these when I'm live streaming. The reason I do that is I think education should be as accessible as affordable and is widely available for as many people as possible. So the video components are free. Now, the hack with me is that I make later on. Those those come with either paid or a pay what you can rate. But the benefit of the hack with me is, is you get custom notes for every single module. You get interactive quizzes. You get access to my private notes. You just get significantly more content. But the video itself, I make live to make it available to anyone and everyone. And by the way, I stream all the time. And when I say all the time, I really mean that now because I now stream during the day while I'm working. So hey, if you've never joined me for a live stream, make sure over on YouTube, you subscribe, hit the little bell notification so that you're notified the next time I am live. All that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the Ascension machine together. Picking up right where we left off in part one, in part one, we were able to get the ID RSA key for user one. We then use John or SSH to John or John to SSH. I don't remember the order of it, but we got the hash for the ID RSA key. We then use John to crack that hash and we found a password for Sammy one. We SSH into the machine and we got the first flag. Now let's go ahead and look back over, over at this thing. And the thing about this machine is it's coming from my good friend Ryan's is hacking Linux courts on Simply Cyber Academy. There's less of a focus on realism and more of a focus of teaching proper enumeration, lateral movement, privilege escalation. So I recommend you look at the hints as you go because it will give you an idea of what to look for so that you are not lost. Now this tells us our only hint is the flag is an opt user too. So let's just try the obvious thing. Can we just CD over to it? We cannot CD over to user two. We can go ahead and cut out Etsy password and see what users are on this machine. And this would be good to grab for our notes. I'm gonna copy all of those and I'm gonna jump over to this. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna do an H1 and we'll say post exploitation. And we'll say uh, users with shells and we'll drop that in there. So we know that we have four different users, user one, user two, user three, and FTP user. Now let's go ahead and do some basic Linux enumeration. There's a few things that we can try. One, we can do sudo dash L. Now I don't know user one's password unless it's Sammy one. Doesn't look like it is. That's just his password for his ID RSA key. But I'm guessing since we're only user one and we need to do lateral movement to different users, we're probably not abusing something to give us root right now, right? We need to compromise a different user. We can just look around in the file system. So if we go back over to our home directory, we can do LSLA and it looks like we do have some information in bash history. I don't know if that's just my commands that I've run or maybe it's something on the machine. Let's cat out bash history. And nope, that's just my commands. So bash history is not going to help us here. We can see it in the local. It's probably not going to be anything there. No, it's default stuff. SSH, we have, of course, our ID RSA key, but we already have that. So that's also not going to be super useful to us. Let's go back out to the full home folder and we can see Ubuntu, the standard user account, then FTP user, user one, user two, user three. And I can already tell by looking at the file permissions over here that I'm not gonna be able to look at the home folders for these other users besides my own user. Let's back out one more and let's just look at the root of the file path. There's a few areas I always check out on a Linux machine in particular. One is I always like to check out the opt directory. Sometimes you can find some scripting or tooling hidden there. So let's go over to opt. LSLA. Oh, well, geez, that's where the flags are at, silly Tyler. So that's actually not going to be useful for us. We can go to temp, see if there's anything there. Hey, Kenny, there should be a support thing. You can reach out to support. That's going to be by the devs that, that reset it for you, not me. I can't fix that for you. 
but they're pretty fast to respond. It is nighttime though, so it might be tomorrow morning. I'm not sure, but they're pretty quick to respond. Anyways, nothing in temp here either. We'll do LS LA. Looking at these other folders. Another one I like to dig into is VAR, especially if there's a web server running, which was there a web server running on this? I think there was, yes, there was right here. So maybe there's something like var www HTML that's going to be worth at least digging into. So let's check that out. We'll go to www. And we actually have quite a few things, including those PHP files. We may be able to find credentials in the wp-config.php. That's a common file for at least hash credentials, potentially. And you can see we do just have the default creds for WordPress, which WordPress wasn't fully running. So I don't actually think those would be helpful, but we can go ahead and grab those for our notes. Maybe they'd be useful later on if this is a legit engagement. I'm gonna do another H2 and we'll just call this general enumeration and loot. And we'll say WordPress default database creds. We'll drop that in there and let's continue enumerating this machine to see what else we have. There's these other PHP files, but none of them are going to be that helpful. What was on index.html? That was just the default thing. Okay, yeah. That's what I thought. None of this other stuff is likely going to be the way forward for us. I'm just going to quickly glance at these. All kind of default things. They're not going to contain creds and any of that stuff. That's standard PHP in WordPress. Okay, so the other tool I like to run, and I think I showed this on the previous lab that we were working on, um, Bank Smarter, when we were working through that one, is a tool called Process Spy or PS Spy. PS Spy allows us to see, are there any cron jobs running that our user doesn't have access to, but maybe we can modify them in some way. We can just see system tasks that are running on regular intervals on the Linux machine. Let's go ahead and see if that's first on this, um, on this VM process spy. And it is, you can see it right here. Oh, I even have a web server on this VM. I'm smart. Apparently let's go to web server. What did I all put in here? I have a bunch of random tools in here. Love it. Good job. Tyler of the past for being a little more organized than Tyler of the current time. Let me go ahead and spin up a Python web server and we can transfer process spy over. We'll do W get HTTP. What the heck is this up here? That should be showing my IP. But it, I don't know what it's doing. So we'll go old school. What is my tunnel IP? It is right here. So we'll get that process by 64. We got it. I'm gonna go ahead and make it executable. And then we'll go ahead and run it and see if we have any interesting processes that just might be running. Now it can take a few minutes for us to begin receiving data, but see for processes that are running, it will show us the process ID and the user ID. Every once in a while, you can also see processes that might be passing a password on the command line, and then you can abuse password reuse. Oh, it also looks like we do have MySQL on this machine, so that's gonna be worth checking into. I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, add that to our notes. We can see that process there. Okay. And it looks like here we have a user with the user ID of 1002 running a temp backup. I don't think I saw that intent, but the fact that it's intent means we can probably make our own backup.sh file and potentially compromise whoever user ID 
1002 is. So let me go ahead and copy that. Uh, abuse this cron job and let's see who user ID 1002 is I would guess it's user 2 and this is the way forward I'm gonna go ahead and stop the monitoring there if we cut out Etsy password we can see that 1002 does belong to user 2 We'll drop that in right there, and let's go ahead and see if there was a backup.sh script. Oh, I'm in temp right now. There is no backup sh script, but it's trying to run it, which means if we create a backup.sh script, it will be executed by user two, and hopefully you can see where this goes. Maybe we can create a reverse shell dot sh like your standard bash shell and when it executes by user two, we will do lateral movement and we'll be able to compromise user two. Now, there's a really cool extension for your browser if you don't have this. I think I showcased this in Bank Smarter as well, but it's called Hack Tools. It's completely free. It's open source. So you can check out the code yourself, but it makes these kinds of things super easy, especially if you're newer to it. I'm going to go ahead and make it full screen mode. But here's the cool thing. You can just enter in your IP and your port, and it will generate all kinds of reverse shells for you. And my IP was what? I don't remember. I'm really dependent on it in the top right corner. This is my IP. We can go ahead and do port 1337 if we want. But I'll show you a few of the other things. Yeah, Genmon, I should just do that as my port. So if you've never checked out this Hack Tools extension, it is pretty cool. So we have, you know, your typical Bash shells. We can go down and see PowerShell and Python and things of that nature. We can go in and check out PHP reverse shells. We can do the shell stabilizing stuff, useful Linux commands, which this is pretty cool too. I never really even dug into all of this stuff. So this would be good for enumeration. We have PowerShell commands. What else do we have? Transfer methods. So if you need to transfer a file, LFI. So if you're looking for LFI, I mean a bunch of cool stuff, cross-site scripting, SQL injection, data encoding, obfuscated files, hashing, the feed, MSF builders, that just metasploit stuff. Yeah, that's cool. It's actually very cool. There's more in this extension than I even realized. But for now, we should just be able to copy this. Copy that one. And we will do I think that's what it was called. Shebang. Set up a listener. And we'll see what happens. Bruce said, hopping off to hang out with the wife. I'll be on study tomorrow. Love it. I will see you tomorrow during the work with me slash study with me streams. Now we can go ahead and run process spy. And we'll see if this ends up executing. Making sure I didn't miss anything. Do 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 I don't know how often it executes it. Maybe it's every couple of minutes. Oh there we see it going. And we just compromise user two. Just like that. So let's go ahead and add that to our notes. We'll grab our backup.sh file that we use to compromise user two. We'll paste that in and then over on our shell, we'll do who am I just showing that we are user two. We'll grab this. And the first thing we'll wanna do is try to stabilize our shell. We can do this a few different ways. My favorite way is to try to do a backdoor SSH key. So let's see if that's possible. If we do LSLA in our user's home folder, you can see he does not have an SSH directory. I'm gonna make one. 
Then I'm going to CD into SSH and I'm going to touch authorized keys and I'm going to echo my public key into his authorized keys. So we'll cat out SSH, IDRSA, pub, grab my public key right there. And we'll echo into authorized keys. Okay, and now let's see if we can SSH as user two. Boom, and now we have a full stable shell as user two. And I'll just add that to our notes. To stabilize the shell, we did a backdoor SSH key. And now we can get rid of this shell. We don't even need it anymore. We can close that out. We likely don't need this one. Oh, that's my web server. Probably don't need user one anymore either just to clean up this stuff. I'm going to rename this one web server and we'll rename this one user two SSH. And now if we LSLA in our home directory. We do have some bash history. I'm almost certain that's just me. Not actually something we can exploit. And you know, if I knew the difference in cat and change directory, that'd be helpful. And no, it's just echoing in my public key into the user's authorized key. But let's go ahead and get that second flag. We'll see to the user two, ls, cat flag two. And we have successfully retrieved the second flag. I'm gonna grab that, drop it into the machine here. And let's see a quick preview. What are we going for next? Now we're gonna work on compromising the FTP user. But I think this is a really good natural stopping point for part two of working through Ascension because, well, we found the second flag. We actually did quite a bit in this video. We did some enumeration. We used Process Spy to identify a job that was running. We realized that we could write to that job. We wrote our own reverse shell. When it executed, we were able to perform lateral movement over to user two and retrieve the second flag. So I want to give you a challenge. All right, we've retrieved flag one and flag two together. I want you to try to get flag three on your own. So go ahead and boot up this machine over on Hack Smarter and work on retrieving flag three. If you get stuck, that is totally fine as usual. In the next video, we will work through it together and we will retrieve flag three together if you get stuck. But give it a try in your first. A lot of learning happens in the struggle. So good luck, have fun, happy hacking.